right okay cool sorry a bit of a technical delay there um welcome to the party boys and girls thanks for joining me uh for this evening short and sweet lesson it shouldn't be more than 20 25 minutes uh i've been very busy with work and with the other stuff um so tonight we are doing we are finishing off the Lorazian Therians and we are going on to shrews and hedgehogs and we're going to be summer, finishing up with moles next week. Cool. So thanks for joining. Uh, we're going to do a bit of a Q&A afterwards, as always. Um, I was supposed to do a Q&A last week, Wednesday, just time kind of went away with me. I never a chance. Sorry about the noise in the background. There's my little cuckoo in the background making noise. Um, he's doing well. Um, mm -hmm. I rescued a whole bunch of birds about a month ago and only one managed to survive. They were all very sick and this guy's doing fantastically. Actually, she looks like a female, um, Dejus Cuckoo, so hopefully she'll be able to be released in the next two to three weeks. All right, so let's go start with sharing screen and take it from there. Um, oh dear, how do we start this? Okay, so shrews, moles and hedgehogs, well part one of shrews, moles and hedgehogs. Yulia Pilotia. How do you say this? Yuli Pachaliflia. I can always never pronounce that word correctly. Okay, so shrews are not rodents and they're not African elephant shrews, as we have discussed last time. They're completely unrelated. Elephant shrews are Afrotherians, more closely related to hedgehogs and art fox and those sorts of guys. Sorry, not hedgehogs, uh, elephants and art fox um, and dussies, um, completely unrelated to real shrews. True shrews are found throughout the world, everywhere except for Australia. So there are around um, 380 known species worldwide, and they belong to the order Eulipotiflea. Okay, I can never pronounce that. And they are found on every continent except Australia, obviously New Zealand as well, and Antarctica, and obviously a whole bunch of isolated islands. But in terms of continents, every continent except for Australia and Antarctica. Unlike rodents, shrews have sharp teeth and um, sharp needle-like teeth. Okay, so they don't have these incisors that continually grow. They're born with the needle-like teeth and they actually lose their milk teeth before they're actually born. So they only have one set of teeth throughout their entire life. And while shrews in, uh, are known to eat seeds and fruit, they usually focus on invertebrates, insects. In fact, I'm pretty sure you've heard of the term, the, the order insectivora. A lot of you guys in high school might have learned that. A lot of you in, in, um, in if you're doing guard training, you would have heard of insectivora. That's been scrapped. And all those species that were put together have been broken up into different orders. And that has been scrapped for quite a long time, for well over 30 years. So if you guys have heard of insectivora, the order, it is a very outdated, very 1960s scientific term, completely out of sync with the modern world and modern genetic studies and fossil studies. So Eulipotiflia, I can never pronounce this, uh, is an order of almost exclusively insectivorous mammals. It includes the following families, uh, shrews, hedgehogs and moon rats, another cool name, solidendons, which are the only two species alive today, solenodons, not solidendons, sorry, and moles. Uh, remember, none of these are related to African um, golden moles or to the tenrex, which looks almost, almost identical, and the, and the elephant shrews. Convergent evolution, those species just happen to be related to, to, to elephants and dussies, and they've evolved to take over the niche in Africa. But they're currently com competing for space in Africa these days. So shrews are very interesting. A lot more interesting people than people get them credit for. They just think, well, it looks like a rodent, but it's smaller. Most species of shrews have a heartbeat of around 800 to 1,000 beats per minute. That is like machine gun fire. And almost all species have to consume their own body weight and food daily, with some requiring at least double that. In fact, some species have been known to consume up to triple their body weight in a day. But most species between their own body weight to double their body weight every day. They have relatively poor eyesight, but they're not blind. They rely mostly on their hearing and their smell to, to pick up um, their prey, as well as their whiskers. Shrews do not hibernate effectively. They do hibernate, but it's more of a state of torpor where they go into a state of semi-alertness, but they're still effectively sleeping. And they'll actually self-digest their own body um, in winter, causing bones and organs to shrink. In fact, shrinking up to 20 to 30%. So even their brain shrink, that's how much they actually digest themselves when they're in the state of torpor. And they are generally solitary, unlike the elephant shrews, which are usually living in monogamous pairs. And males generally do not assist with the rearing of young. Once he does his business, he moves on in life. So 
The family of shrews are called Suricidae, and there are 26 genera of shrews divided amongst three subfamilies. And it's actually pretty easy to learn about this. It's a lot as complicated as people think. There are white tooth shrews, African shrews only found in Africa, not to be confused with elephant shrews. Elephant shrews are also only found in Africa, but African shrews are true shrews also only found in Africa. A little bit confusing, sorry. And then of course the red tooth shrews, which are probably the most interesting, and we'll talk about that in a second. So white tooth shrews are pretty cool. And they include the largest and the smallest shrew species. And these shrews are known to caravan with their young. So the mother will uh, stand in front and the young will grab a tail and after the, and so on and so forth. So each young member of the young will grip the, the tail of the one in front of it. And then she'll drag the whole little convoy off into the bush and guide them off to a new site if they need to escape. So they're known for doing that. And they're the genus with the highest number of species of any animal. I um, don't actually know how many species are in the genus, but there's a lot. There's a substantial, I think close to 100, if I remember correctly. And um, they include the Asian house shrew, which is the largest of all shrew species. It weighs around 100 grams and it's about 15 centimeters long. By contrast, the Etruscan pygmy shrew, which only weighs two grams and is around three centimeters long. You can see this little guy over here. And then by far the coolest name ever, Thor's hero shrew. <laughs> that is ridiculous. And they're called hero shrews for a reason. And um, they were named after an American scientist called Thorfeldt, but also partly named after the god of thunder because they are tough as nails. And the reason why they're tough as nails is because they actually have these interlocking spines with almost like the scale-like structure connecting their skulls, their, their, their bones together. And they're very, very difficult to crush. People have tried to kill them with standing on them and they just don't die. You might break their legs, you might break their free ribs, but you're not gonna break their back. They're really, really tough. So there's only two species of um, hero shrews. There's the normal hero shrew and Thor's hero shrew. And they're found deep in the Congo basin and they're almost, um, they're extremely rare, extremely difficult to find, but God help you if you try to kill one, you're not gonna take them out. They're really, really tough. African shrews are found exclusively in sub-Saharan Africa. There are three genera and around 20 species. These include the Congo shrew, this little boy over here, the forest shrew, one of the most common in Africa, found right through down to, into, um, found throughout, sorry, in south, Southern Africa, extremely common. Found in KwaZulu-Natal, Lesotho, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, very common in Southern Africa. And Mount Kenya mole shrews. And the mole shrews are found almost exclusively in Kenya, Eastern and Western Kenya. Red tooth shrews are really, really cool in the respect that they actually have these iron deposits in their teeth. They actually ensure they lo uh, last longer. And I remember I told you that shrews are only born with one set of teeth. They don't grow like rodents. Um, and they continue to, they will be worn down throughout their life. So white tooth mo um, shrews and African shrews will lose their teeth in old age. Red tooth shrews have these iron deposits in their teeth, kind of like Wolverine, all those adamantium. And um, they make them really, really, really tough. And they actually are gradually outcompeting other species of shrew. And they are by far the most common shrews. So really, really cool. You'll notice over here, the shrews don't have a zygomatic arch over here between the back of the skull and the front of the skull. And they have a very, 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 uh, and that also, that's because they actually don't, comp they don't have uh, a very aggressive lifestyle with, part, uh, with um, males. They don't fight long-term, usually one male will attack, the other will dive off. So it doesn't pay to have this robust skull. And also being foragers uh, and diggers to have leaf litter, they actually wanna be very lightly built. And um, overall, they have a very light skull and having their zygomatic arch over here, that connection between the front and the back doesn't benefit them at all. They also have very, very small eyes and a zygomatic arch, one of its functions is actually to support the eye sockets, the orbital sockets. And seeing as they have very, very rudimentary eyes, they certainly don't need it. But what you will notice, they have an extremely long rostrum over here. And that also leads to having a very, very developed sense of smell. Red tooth shrew, uh, shrews are found extensively throughout the Northern Hemisphere. They're not found in Africa, unfortunately, or fortunately, they've probably killed other shrews. And these include the Taiwanese mole shrew, the short-tailed shrew, which is pretty awesome, and the North American least shrew, the smallest of all the red tooth shrews. Now, one thing that people don't realize is that a lot of shrew species actually have venom. There are not many mammals that have venom, but a lot of them have venom. Um, and they're broken into, uh, a lot of shrew species do, and we'll discuss other species later. 
and they don't have true fangs, but they rather have grooves on the inside of their teeth, which um, coupled with the venom glands allow them to deliver, deliver a really potent bite. And one bite is potent enough to kill up to 200 mice. Now it's not gonna kill a grown human, but it'll certainly cause some profuse swelling, some bleeding. Um, if you're allergic to it, you'll have some uh, headache reactions. It'll just be a generally unpleasant experience. So um, none of the African shrews fortunately are venomous to the best of my knowledge, but don't get sticking your fingers into the mouth of shrews. And it's actually a combination of neurotoxic and cytotoxic and some hemotoxic properties. And it can cause profuse swelling, bleeding. Uh, you'll have some shortness of breath, some headaches, and it's just generally, generally unpleasant. Short-tailed American shrews are the most well-known venomous shrews, and they're found extensively throughout North America. Now, not only shrews are venomous, quite a few species are, and um, numerous vet reptiles are venomous. And um, there are actually four orders of mammals that have uh, venomous species. You, uh, the shrews and solidendons, which we'll do next time. Monotremes, the platypuses, just male platypuses have these venomous spurs. Vampire bats have venom, but not in the conventional set. It basically is there to act as an anticoagulant and allows them to drink blood far more effectively. So they'll bite their prey, the venom interacts with the blood, causes it to become very watery and they're able to lap it up. And the slow lorises, which are cousins of bush babies, actually have these very primitive venom glands underneath their armpits, which help with um, predators and also help with parasites. It poisons parasites on their skin. But we'll talk about them another day when we do primates. Now, echolocation is something that's been observed in shrews. Shrews are capable of using echolocation to hunt, not to the same extent as dolphins and bats, but they are capable of actually sending out these clicking sounds and burrows and warrens and amongst leaf litter and actually locating their prey. Once they locate their prey within a ballpark vicinity, they then use their eyesight to a lesser extent, but more so their hearing and their nose. They've got a very adept sense of smell and they're able to actually pick up on their prey and hunt them from there. But they click and they whir and they make these little sounds and they're able to use echolocation to hunt their prey. Another amazing feat of, of ingenuity by our shrews. Now, shrews are very aggressive. In fact, we still use to this day the term as, a, as, a, um, as an adjective, we use the term very shrew in nature, very loud and opinionated and aggressive. Um, and it's been used throughout history to describe an argumentative, difficult, outspoken woman. In fact, uh, the taming of the shrew by William Shakespeare is so named because of the entire central plot around taming, for want of a better word, a difficult woman. Ladies, you're more than welcome to be difficult. We applaud strong, opinionated women. Uh, just to make you, don't be too difficult like guys, don't be too difficult. Nothing wrong with a woman having an opinion. Uh, except for in Shakespearean times, of course. Now, hedgehogs um, are related to shrews. And they're found extensively throughout the old world. There are no North American hedgehogs. Also, there are no Australian or New, New Zealand hedgehogs. Remember, there are no placental mammals except bats native to New Zealand. There was one fossil species found in the Americas, but currently there are no living species in America. You find a, a species of, of hedgehog in your garden in North America, it's probably a garden, it's probably an escaped pet. Now, by contrast to shrews, you'll see the hedgehogs have got quite a pronounced skull. They've got that sagittal crest over here. They've got that zygomatic arch and they've got distinct dentition. They've got incisors, pronounced canines, premolars and molars and rather robust jaw. And that's because they're more of a generalist in their diet. They are insectivores, but they eat fruit, they eat nuts, they eat roots. And they need to have an all round dentition to accompany themselves. They also have rather large eyes compared to shrews. And again, that's why they have that zygomatic arch over here supporting that eye socket. So they have rather uh, large eyes. By contrast, they also have a really much smaller compared to shrews, a much smaller uh, rostrum, which indicates they would not have as, as developed sense of smell. But um, that's also to do with their diet, really. So hedgehogs are not venomous at all, unlike shrews, some species of shrews, but many species are known to wipe bufotoxins from toads. Now, bufotoxins are the, 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 the poisons and the venoms that toads exude from their backs. So when these the hedgehogs actually prey on the toads, they take the skin and they rub it on their backs, and it gives them some added layer of protection. All species of hedgehogs are nocturnal. Uh, they might find them out during the day. It's usually because they've been disturbed. They're not hunting during the day. And they're born without spines, but they actually start to grow them within 36 hours. It gives them that edge. So the spines are just highly modified hairs. And hedgehogs are broken into two families, the true hedgehogs 
and the other family being the moon rats, hairy hedgehogs, or the gymnure, um, which again, I found mostly throughout Asia. Now, hedgehogs are, there are five hedgehogs uh, throughout the world, or there are 18 species. I know most people just think of there being one species of hedgehog, but actually there are 18 species of hedgehog. Some are critically endangered and some are quite common. Uh, the one we all know and love in South Africa is the Southern African hedgehog. If you've got a garden in Johannesburg and you don't have Jack Russells, you'll probably find one there if you've got Jack Russells, unlikely. Uh, Brent's hedgehog found throughout Asia. Okay, very cool, very large ears. And the most well known is the European hedgehog. Hedgehogs are naturally immune to snake venom. It's one of the few species of mammal that are immune to snake venom. They don't prey on snakes, they hunt snakes, but it gives them an edge. Uh, there have been some records of, of hedgehogs eating very small juvenile hatchling snakes, but they certainly don't prey on them in the same way that mongooses and um, badgers do. Incidentally, certain species of pig also are immune to snake venom. Um, unlike porcupines, hedgehogs cannot shed their spines in defense. And remember, porcupines are rodents in no way related to hedgehogs. And an adult hedgehog has up to 9,000 spines on their back. So while hedgehogs tame relatively easily, they tame incredibly easily, actually, they're prone to bite. They have very, very, very aggressive bites, uh, very tough needle-like teeth. And the fact that they're nocturnal, they don't like to be active during the day, it makes them not ideal pets. So I know there's this booming market for hedgehogs at the moment, but I wouldn't condone it. It's not that they don't belong in captivity. They tame just as well as the cattle dogs do. They just don't make great pets. Um, and I don't think that we should be taking any more animals out of the wild uh, unnecessarily. Uh, there's a booming hedgehog trade. The European hedgehog is the most common in the market, but there are other species as well. Incidentally, tenrecs have also been domesticated. Remember, tenrecs look like hedgehogs. We discussed them when we discussed discuss the African insectophiles. Uh, they're cousin of, Afri of the African elephant shrews. So, and they behave very similarly, but they're native to Madagascar. Now, talking about hedgehogs, one of my favorite writers as a child was Beatrix Potter, and she was well known for taking English and European uh, wildlife and in, incorporating it into, into her books and her stores, the children's stories, and Peter Rabbit obviously being everyone's favorite. Now, Beatrix Potter was an English natural scientist, conservationist, and a writer, and farmer for that matter. And despite for her fame as, an, as a children's writer and a very well-known artist, she was a well-respected mycologist. In fact, one of the top mycologists in English, England. A mycologist is someone who studies fungi. And she contributed significantly to the, the my, mycology um, studies in the 1920s and the 1910s. And she was a very uh, experienced sheep farmer as well. And she lectured um, at numerous universities and numerous farmers on regenerative um, farming practices and actually how to make sure that your land stayed fecund and actually viable far past what was conventional back in those days. They would just farm it until the land was dead and move on. But um, she was far ahead of her time and she was actually a very respectable scientist. On top of this, her stories around English wildlife uh, sparked a wave of passionate junior conservationists, even me. I think part of my interest in wildlife definitely came from Beatrix Potter and Peter Rabbit in particular. Uh, ultimately leading to a historically persecuted species like foxes, you know, the English love to kill their foxes, being protected. And um, in the case of Miss, and the tale of Miss Tiggy Winkle, <laughs> say that with a straight face, um, being one of the most well-known hedgehog familiars in her stories. Now, moon rats, hedgehogs, and gymnures are what we call hairy hedgehogs. They don't have true spines. And there are five species and uh, sorry, there are uh, five genera and eight species found, found throughout um, Asia mostly. The moon rat is the most common over here, it looks terrifying. 